and welcome to x-ray review in this video we're going to go through the 10 most common abdominal calcifications seen on x-ray let's start with one of the most common abdominal calcifications which is a kidney stone or often referred to as nephrolithiasis or urolithiasis within the retroperitoneal area of the kidney we're looking for areas of calcification the radiographic appearance depends on the stone composition which can vary significantly, but typically kidney stones appear homogeneous in density on radiographs. So the larger a kidney stone is, the easier it should be to see. However, many kidney stones do not show up at all on radiographs or can be very challenging to locate. And here's an example of a small kidney stone. So if you key features about kidney stones the appearance depends on the stone composition they don't always show up on x-ray ultrasonography is often the appropriate follow-up and surgical management may be indicated for larger stones over five millimeters or if the patient has severe symptoms if it's in a, a atypical location infection things like that here's a good example of multiple abdominal concretions in the right middle abdomen representing gallstones or cholelithiasis. You should see a cluster of peripherally calcified concretions within the expectant area of the gallbladder. These are the gallstones circled in green. Don't let the adjacent costochondral calcification fool you into thinking it represents pathology, which it does not. That's what's seen here in blue. For more information on this, I have an entire video on how not to confuse this with pathology. You may hear the term bag of diamonds appearance in regards to gallstones on an x-ray. This is actually a terrible name because real diamonds do not show up on an x-ray even though they're dense. If you don't believe me, try it out. I didn't believe it either and in my residency we x-rayed two rings, one that we knew that was real and another that was cubic zirconium and sure enough real diamonds won't show up on an x-ray, you only see the ring setting. So a few key features about gallstones, uh, they occur in approximately 10% of the population with a predominance in women. Ultrasound is the, considered the gold standard for assessing gallstones. And then when it comes to who gets gallstones, the five Fs, this is fair skin, more prevalent in Caucasian population, fat or overweight, female, fertile, uh, familial history, or over the age of 40. First thing with this radiograph, if you believe the large dark spot in the left upper abdomen is the abnormality, then please review my video on how not to be fooled by the normal gastric air bubble or air in the stomach. Its appearance can be distracting and I can't begin to tell you how many times the gastric air bubble is why a doctor is sending me images to review. Okay, so what else is on the image? In the left middle abdomen, you should see multiple oval densities that almost look pill-shaped, and that's because these represent multiple undigested pills. Not everyone considers the bioaccessibility of their vitamins until you see them on an x-ray, but these are undigested pills. You can see all kinds of stuff on x-ray. Even the smallest of clothing artifacts can show up on well-taken x-rays if you look close enough. Here you can even see the brand label of this clothing overlying the patient's stomach. So always be aware of external or internal artifacts that can mimic an abdominal calcification or pathology. Here's another example of undigested pill or tablet artifacts. And here's one of the most common abdominal calcifications to see. On this lateral radiograph, there is atherosclerotic placking of the abdominal aorta outlining cyst-like calcification of an abdominal aortic aneurysm. Abdominal aortic aneurysms represent the 10th most common cause of death in the Western world, with males being more commonly affected than females. Let's first look at the boundaries of the abdominal aorta, which are emphasized on this x-ray due to the presence of conduit wall calcification or atherosclerotic placking. Next, let's find and measure the widest visible portion of the abdominal aorta. And in this case, it looks like we get about 5.5 centimeters. 
So what is considered too big in regards to the size of the abdominal aorta? Well, over three centimeters is focal dilatation or aneurysm. Over five centimeters is a medical consultation and over seven centimeters is an immediate medical consultation. Here's an example of one of the most common mass-like soft tissue calcifications seen in the pelvic basin. As long as it's not arising from the adjacent sacrum, odds are this large heterogeneous calcification represents a benign uterine fibroid or leiomyoma. For more information on these, I have a video on the topic which includes numerous examples. So uterine fibroids or leiomyomas are going to be found in females. They're the most common solid benign uterine neoplasm. They're usually going to occur in the uterus, but they can occur anywhere that has smooth muscle. And when they do occur, they're usually multiple as opposed to solitary. And while they may look alarming, uh, typically the radiographic finding is incidental um, unless the patient is younger uh, and trying to get pregnant, complications with pregnancy. Uh, that's when these can be clinically important and there can be rare complications, but typically speaking There is no reason to advance to advanced imaging such as CT Unless there are clinical red flags or it is a younger patient uh, trying to get pregnant Here is a frontal lumbar radiograph with a large calcific density in the left middle abdomen This is a good example of a staghorn calculi. This is a renal calculi that obtains its characteristic shape by forming a cast of the renal pelvis and calyces. This calcification should extend into at least two calyces. So staghorn calculi are commonly treated surgically and the entire stone needs to be removed. Otherwise, these residual fragments act as a reservoir for infection and recurrent stone formation. If left untreated, staghorn calculi can result in chronic infection. Here's a frontal lumbopelvic radiograph. In this case, let's look closely at the pelvic basin. You should notice a serpiginous tubular conduit wall calcification extending inferior medially on both sides of the pelvic basin. This is seen only in males and represents calcification of the vas deferens. Calcification of the vas deferens can be clinically relevant due to its strong association with diabetes mellitus, which is the most common cause. When caused by chronic infection, it usually presents unilaterally. On this pelvic radiograph, it looks like there is a mass-like soft tissue calcification within the pelvic basin. So your first thought should be a fibroid or a leiomyoma. However, when we zoom in, this lesion almost looks like teeth, and that's because this represents a teratoma. Teratomas are germ cell tumors that arise from ectopic pluripotent stem cells that fail to migrate during embryogenesis. So yes, these are teeth growing in the wrong location. On this radiograph, you should notice multiple focal areas of soft tissue calcification in the left upper abdomen within the expectant region of the spleen. Splenic calcifications on radiographs typically appear as multiple small round densities averaging about five millimeters in size. These calcifications can present in various shapes and forms and can be caused by numerous different etiologies such as a splenic granulomatous disease. Here is a frontal view of the hip or pelvis and you should see multiple calcified lesions overlying and next to the ilium. These calcifications represent injection granulomas. Injection granulomas are the most common calcification in the soft tissues of the gluteal region. Intramuscular injections can lead to fat necrosis and dystrophic calcification, which results in a radiographically visible granuloma.
On this frontal lumbar radiograph, there is a cyst wall calcification in the left upper abdomen adjacent to the gastric air bubble. This is a good example of a calcified splenic cyst. Approximately 80% of all splenic cysts are secondary cysts, often post-traumatic in etiology, and typically ultrasonography or CT are appropriate follow-up imaging. And thank you very much for listening. If you made it this far, don't forget to like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And if you have any questions or comments, don't forget to put them below. Thanks again.